What is up, everybody? Welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups, and it is the final Friday of 2022, and it's Friday, so that means it's time for the Rex and Robbie Show, and you can't have the Rex and Robbie Show without Rex. What is up, my man? What's up, brother? Sorry about that. I had I didn't have my mute off. <laughs> you heard that <laughs> that background uh, talking. So sorry, that was the ad that comes on your channel. <laughs> well, I didn't hear anything, man. So you're all good. Oh, good, good, good. It was coming across for me. I'm like, who is that woman talking? So, uh, hey, Perry Game, Taki 60, 616, uh, Road Collecting. What's going on, guys? Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for joining us. Today, we're going to be talking about what we're looking forward to in 2023, right? I mean, 2022 was a decent enough year, right? It's world peace, right? Is that your number one? <laughs> Well, you know what I saw the other the, the I think it maybe it was last week. They during during prime time they ran like old clips from Saturday Night Live, um, you know, from all different eras, you know, Christmas related. And there was that one skip by Steve Martin, and they re-ran that. It was so funny, you know, where he goes, where he's doing the 12 days of Christmas thing, and he goes, Well, first, you know, uh, you know, world peace and children holding hands or whatever, and then then he gets into, you know, I want a million dollars and, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? And then you go back, well, no, 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 you know, world peace, but then, no, wait, 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 let me, I just rewatched that skit. I was, I, I forgot how funny that was. Steve Martin, man, miss him. Uh, miss his movies. He hasn't made anything in, in a lot of years, but. Uh, but he's got but, that, didn't uh, he have a show with Martin Short or something out right now? He did. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They had that show. I didn't watch a show. And with uh, Selena Gomez, I think it was. It got really great reviews. I just never got around to watching it, dude. Um, yeah, me neither. But but Drew Stevens, what's going on? Your first PCP live stream. Awesome. Oh, station. Thank you for Thank joining, you us. joining us, man. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we can make it interesting enough. You'll come back. <laughs> yeah, right. So we want to talk about what we're looking forward to in 2023. And that's movies, TV shows, comics, sports, whatever it is that tickles your fancies. Um let us know in the comments, in the chat, what are you looking forward to, right? And and Rex, like, aside from world peace, and let's just get that one out of the way, world peace, and now now we can ask for, or we can talk about anything else, right? Um, what, do you, what What's something you're looking forward to in 2023? Um, a, a, a suitcase with uh, uh, $100 bills, unmarked, uh, falling out of the sky, um, you know, and then, of course, world peace. <laughs> I'm going to do the Steve Martin shtick the whole show. I can't help it now. It's in my mind. Uh, cool. Road Collecting. Yeah, that's right. It was uh, Murderers in the Building. Um, uh, he didn't watch season two, though. I heard great reviews about season one, so I'm, I might pick it up, you know, over the weekend or something. Who knows? There's so many things on my list to watch. It's crazy. So is that your real answer? A suitcase of money with hundreds? No. Of money? All right. So I focus because you come on, man. You sent me this email. Talk about an open general question. Yeah. I mean, this this show could go on for hours. We could go on to January second with this list. So I focus mostly on movies. All right. Only because it's kind of been the relevant topic that that that's that we've been talking about for several weeks. All right. So I broke them up into two categories: MCU, and then just movies in general. That 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 I, I'm looking forward to to, to seeing in 2023, um, but uh, but yeah, so that that's how my list was basically made up. Yeah, I got uh, mostly movies on my list too, and a handful of comics and things like that. But it's <laughs> mostly movies, you know. Right. So yeah, and you know we don't watch all the movies, but these are definitely the ones that we are going to each watch, right? You know, like so, like cool. what you got on your list? Well, that's the goal, obviously, right? All right, so. So basically, MCU has got a bunch of stuff coming out next year. So I, I'm just going to read it in no particular order. Well, well, in chronological order. But again, so we'll get through mine fast. I mean, and, and I'm going to watch all these. I don't want to say I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it because it's obviously something new. But am I like in heavy anticipation, like waiting for it? Like, oh, my God, I can't wait for this to come out. No, not necessarily, right? So MCU's got a full slate, right? So you got... Ant Man Wasp, uh, uh, Quantum Mania coming out, obviously. Guardian of the Galaxy uh, three, Secret Invasions, the Marvels, the Echo series, the Loki two series, Blade, and then Ironheart. Right. So that is a full year, and I guess that this is now what? What were they can that they would consider that Phase five? 
Yeah, this is the start of phase five. Now, Blade did get right. pushed back. So I think Blade's going to be like 2025 now at this point. Or oh, something. Blade did get pushed back. I didn't see that. All right. So, all right. So Blade's going to get pushed back, which is fine. You know, I mean, I, in the end, it's not, I don't know how they're going to connect it to the, the overall MCU universe, but we kind of touched on this, I think, Wednesday, right? Uh, uh, because Amy kind of brought it up. You know, what are we expecting for phase five? I don't know. I mean, you know, again, the, 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 it, it's a challenging road because now there are all of these expectations, which we've talked about. And it's not the same as, say, phase one with Iron Man. You know, we really had no expectations of any kind, right? We're, we're just hoping it don't suck. So so now there's this 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 anticipation, this expectation that you're going to lead us to another end game. And I think that's why, I, you know, when we talked about it Wednesday, I think overall everybody kind of was, I guess the general impression was kind of meh, you know, about phase four. Nobody was generally excited about it. I think we spent more time bashing some of the movies that, that came out of phase four than we did. did. Yeah, really talk, talk about it. It. yeah, I believe so. We, we went on for a while about She-Hulk there. Um, out of all those Marvel projects, what are you most looking forward to if you had to pick one? All right, uh, Drew Stevens says Flash after seven thousand years in development. I that's on my list, but I, I I have a specific mention as to why. But all right, so out of the list, I think you know obviously Ant Man Wasp. It's right around the corner. We've been waiting for it for a while. We've been talking about it for a while. I enjoy the movie, the casting, the acting. I, you know, all of it. I, I I thought came together pretty well. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy, honestly, um, that has been. Uh, surprise since the first movie uh, you, you know i'm a big fan of james gunn uh, so i expect that this will be really good i haven't even seen the holiday special yet which i know everybody said was fantastic no, so i'll try to try to watch that this weekend um then obviously you know obviously loki too because i really enjoyed the first series um and then the marvels believe it or not uh the marvels i think i i genuinely like captain marvel um, I know there were, there was kind of a lackluster kind of response to it, whatever. Uh, you know, at first people didn't like Brie Larson that much. I, you know, to me, I liked it. I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was well done. Um, you know, enough comedy, but not too much. You know, um, I thought it was funny. You know, we, we get to see Nick Fury and how he ends up with the eye patch. I thought that was interesting. That was an interesting, you know, thing. So, um, and then everything else, I'm, I'm excited, but I, you know, if, if they get pushed back like Blade, it's not going to be the end of the world for me. Out of the Marvel properties, what I'm most looking forward to is Guardians 3, because like you, big James Gunn fan, love those Guardians movies. They're my favorite movies in the MCU. So I'm excited to see him conclude this trilogy, especially with some of the, so the stuff that was set up, if anything, in the holiday special are some new character dynamics, right? Mm -hmm. that, that you'll want to know about, I'm sure, before they get into it. So I would recommend you check that out. I am looking forward to Ant-Man because the closer we get to it, the more we hear about what it's supposed to be. And apparently it's Peyton Reed wanting to do an Avengers level movie. So this is supposed to be one of the most wide, like one of the biggest in scope and scale movies that they've done since the end of you know the the infinity war end game stuff but uh we shall see we shall see i know a lot of people are looking forward to seeing kang so uh i am i'm excited to see what they're going to do there and it seems like if there's going to be a marvel movie that teases like a connection like a connective tissue to thread through phase five it should start with ant-man right like with kang being agree. fully introduced so i think a lot of people are excited about about those ones and i i definitely am so you got some dc movies too coming out now was it somebody was it drew mentioned the flash i'm actually looking forward to seeing the flash bruh because they say they 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 have a lot of faith behind this movie they think michael keaton is amazing in the movie they got the whole baggage with ezra miller that's unfortunate but i am finally excited just to see what it's going to be <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i don't necessarily have high expectations, but I'm just excited to see what this is going to be, especially with so many people, so many problems attached to it and so much faith that the studio still has behind this project. Well, I, I think it, it's like, it, 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 it's like going to a restaurant waiting way too long for your dinner to be served after work, right? You're just at a point this time with the flash. And that's why I made my list was just, Oh, for the love of Pete, let's just let's just see it already. Just let's finally release this movie. 
Okay, before Ezra Miller, you know, head comes flying off. All right, Let, let's just get this done. Okay, you know, it, it, it's you're in a steakhouse, you ordered your dinner, it's an hour and a half later, you still haven't gotten it. I, at that point, I don't even care if the steak is cold. Just serve me the steak, please. Okay, so we can get on with my life, right? So it, it's almost that kind of feeling, which I which I think is the same feeling you have. Where you just want to see it. After all of this nonsense, all of the Ezra Miller drama, all of this, can we finally see the damn movie? You know, and I think it's that kind of feeling, no matter what. I, I think it's that, that way for most fans, probably. Yeah, and, and we're all really excited to see Michael Keaton come back, obviously. And uh, Rogue Collecting, yes, uh, yes. Uh, Loki Season 2 is supposed to be the summer of 2023. And I am looking forward to that because I did like Loki season one. I really, really did. So, so did I. Yeah, yeah. I thought that so was I think that'll, that'll, that'll be a good one. Are you looking forward to any of the other DC projects coming out this year? Well, you got Shazam coming out, right? Uh, very soon, as a matter of fact. So yeah. I am I am uh, uh, excited to see that. What I find ironic is, and I think somebody said, uh, um, oh, it was Roll Collecting. You can't keep all of these DC news straight. And, and that's, I would totally agree with that. I mean, again, now, and, and I mentioned this on Wednesday, I, I, I think it's a good thing that James Gunn is trying to put a lid on all of the, the, you know, just rumors and comments and leaks that keep coming out. And he's trying to keep a cap on it and make sure that there's one voice. And I think that's what we're seeing. Now, as a result of that, the information flow is not coming at the, the rate I think that the DC fans or the comic fans or whatever, James Gunn fans, whatever you want to call it, you, that, 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 you know, at this point in time and, and, uh, uh, our Ouroboros steak, man, I, I swear it's like reading, reading uh license plate sometimes. Um, yeah, you, you really can't, you know, DC has, has put itself in a corner where the James Gunn move was a good one, but, but pretty much everything that we were talking about concerning that universe was, was pretty much negative crap. And they put themselves in that hole. You know, they really did it, with the disorganization that the, the, the no, the, you know, the, 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 the no real game plan. So, so, you know, I think it, it, it's a good thing that he's doing it, but I think that, that, uh, uh, I don't know, Rex, you want your Colts take until you get it. It sucks. Yeah. But I've waited an hour and a half for two gun Pedro at that point. I'm starving. A saltine cracker will probably taste good at that point. Right. As long as it's um, free. Right? But I, I understand your point. I understand your point. I mean, you know, I'm if, bored. can I hang out with you guys a little bit? Yeah. Come hang out with Amy's going to hang out. She wants to talk about 2023 as well. I uploaded um, all our stuff on. To, all right. To, there on, you go. I uploaded all our stuff for the, for the art show tonight. So oh, there you go. All right. So hi, Robbie. Go. hello, Amy. How um, are you? Good. So, how are you? I'm great. So, you know, so awesome. let me see. I kind of lost my train of thought there, didn't I? Um, oh yeah. But blue Beetle's supposed to come out next year, right? Yeah. Blue beetle, uh, Aquaman two is still coming out in the flash yeah. of course and the biggest thing i'm looking forward to with dc films in 2023 are the announcements of what they're doing when we actually get no more rumors and it's not just us having to talk about james gunn shooting down this rumor or getting mm -hmm. rid of this person i'm really looking forward to knowing what they're doing what their opening slate's going to be like we know they're doing a superman movie i'm looking forward to casting news i'm looking forward to news about other movies that are going to spin out of it and and I'm just really pumped to see creators attached to it. What about you, Amy? Are you looking forward to DC films in 2023? DC, it's crazy because I've, I've seen all the, all the stuff on Twitter. Like, people are upset. Henry Cavill's out. They got to start fresh. But, like, but kind of like what you guys were saying, it was kind of a – it was being messy from the beginning because they wanted to catch up with Marvel so badly. They just rushed everything. So I'm, I'm happy that they're kind of taking a pause – and reevaluating everything, and I tr I trust James Gunn. Like we've seen him do incredible things with with Marvel and DC, so I, I trust him. I, I trust him to know what what to do with all these characters. And and, and like he said, like get the, the Superman project sounds interesting, and I don't know how he's going to deal with the conflicts that are currently involved with DC. But but again, I have faith. Well, I, I think that the hiring of James is hanging really on the table. Who's banging on the table? And could you please Amy, stop? Okay. She's very physical about <laughs> it's that. Like shocking me. I talk table. with my hands. <laughs> All right. So, so I think I think that 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 
the faith in James Gunn is very important. I think that 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 was a necessary hire because you needed somebody who's going to take the lead that, yeah, they're going to gripe and complain. But what I find interesting is- Who did they hire with James Gunn again? Peter Peter Safran. Okay, so I'm like, right, it's two people. It's not just him. I just noticed how hard it's been to keep the rumor mill from from flowing. And, And what I mean by that is just the other day I read another, and I don't- unconfirmed sources, but another rumor mill coming out of that universe, even with James Gunn at the head. And what it was, was that supposedly, and I, I don't, I don't remember reading anything about uh, Dwayne Johnson saying these things, but apparently within the article, it said that Dwayne Johnson didn't really respect or like Shazam. Okay. Because the, the ultimate goal at the beginning was obviously black Adam is a, a Shazam villain, right? So it only made natural sense. It's at some point that would combine, right? But the, the word on the street, supposedly, and I have no no independent confirmation of it, was that that Dwayne uh, uh, the Rock did had did not like Shazam, did not have a lot of respect for it, saw a different vision for Black Adam, right? And then in the article, it points out that apparently Peter uh, Safran was one of the producers on Shazam, the original Shazam. You, you see how they're linking the, the dots here, right? Right. Yeah. So then all of a sudden it's been announced that Dwayne The Rock Johnson is out. Black Adam is out. There will not be a Black Adam 2. And then it comes out that, that you know, he never respected Shazam. All of a sudden the co-CEO over at uh, uh, DCU happens to be one of the producers of Shazam. Coincidence? Who knows? But to me... You know, again, it didn't quote any unknown or unknown sources or, you know, like like they always do. But what I I took out of that article was that's the problem that DC has had year after year after year, even with gun at the helm. It, it, it's and I say this totally jokingly, but it's almost as if it's Kevin Feige out there leaking all this stuff. Right. You know, it, it's almost comical how they can't control it. And even with Gun at the Helm, it's still leaking out. And now they're trying to pull the, the Saffron into it. Like, oh, well, you know, The Rock insulted his movie that he produced. And that's why The Rock is out. Now, again, this could just be the dying, you know, like a chicken without a head. You cut off the chicken, the body's still running around kind of thing. And I hope that it is. But to me, that has been one of the primary problems. You've heard me complain about it before. Zaslev, you know, saying all the things he was saying before he hired Gun, and even after hiring Gun. Stop. Yeah. Stop. The problem the problem has been all these leaks. One of the things that it shows, though, because some of them are legitimate leaks and some of them are just rumors, right? But what it just shows is it shows a, a big interest for whatever reason in what DC is going to be doing. More of an interest than I think we've had collectively over the last 10 years for DC yes. movies. You know, so I think it's a good sign that so many people are interested in knowing soon what's going on and knowing all the nitty gritty details because usually people don't care about stuff like that right usually i don't think amy are there any of the mcu projects that you're looking forward to next year uh most of them really um i wonder like you guys brought up ant-man like since the movie's around the corner i wonder if they're going to drop another trailer soon i would think so they're probably waiting for the end of the year that's yeah, a good point. Yeah, because there's all there's mm-hmm. always like a lot of traffic. When they drop the Guardians trailer, like I'm super excited for that, but I'm also like kind of scared because I love these characters. I don't want to end. This is the final chapter. I remember texting my cousin, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Uh, yeah, I'm me neither. Sure gonna kill somebody. I'm not yeah, gonna he even that. I think they just teased it too that there would be a big death in it. And I'm like, uh, oh, uh, I'm, not ready. I'm, not ready. I'm not ready for any of it. But I love those movies, so I'm really, really pumped for that one in particular. You know, there's a Warner Brothers movie I'm looking forward to that's not a DC film. And it's uh, the new Christopher Nolan film, Oppenheimer. Really interested to see that. I'm a huge Nolan fan. Uh, We got Cillian Murphy playing Oppenheimer. And I just trust this dude so much, Christopher Nolan. I have not ever not liked one of his movies. Like, I've loved every single one of his movies. I think they're (laughs) innovative, groundbreaking. Are y'all Nolan fans? Are y'all excited for this one? I respect Christopher Nolan. Um, I'm, he's not my go-to, but I, again, I do like the stuff that he's made. Do I think people kind of elevate him just a little bit too much? Maybe, but that's just my opinion. I I actually that's didn't know that. Um, I didn't know that uh, he was he was going to be the director on it. I mean, I like him. Um, you know, uh, I don't know if I would necessarily. I don't know if I would necessarily see a movie because he's a director. 
if that makes any sense. Yeah, I get y'all. You know, you are yeah, the opposite. I mean, of me. I, I, like, if Nolan's on something, I'm I'm diving in. Like, I'm 100 percent on board. Like, that's just the way I am. But apparently, y'all are not as big of Nolan fans as me, and that's okay. That's okay. No, no, it, it's it's. I don't know. I, I how do I put this? I, I guess the days of a. I feel a little bit like the days of the Steven Spielberg, you know, where, oh, my God, he's a fantastic director. I'm going to watch anything that he he, 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 he farts out. I, I'm kind of over. I, I don't know that, you know, and again, I'm not saying that I don't like Christopher Nolan. Um, you know, I like his stuff. I, I just I'm not entirely sure, you know, if I would uh, I would necessarily just run to watch a movie because oh, it's Christopher sense. Nolan without, you know, without knowing the topic. But that, that I don't know any direction directors that i would do you know man cave inception I, I i really enjoyed inception you know i thought it was a very unique kind of movie um and and i'll give nolan this much he's willing to do those the question really becomes though i think does oppenheimer really is it really going to gain any traction okay, i think I, so it's christopher nolan I, I, warner brothers is going to put a lot of money behind it i think yeah, i think, that, I think that, that's works. not what i'm saying i i I will probably end up watching it because I, I actually like period pieces. I do like, you know, things that deal with history and that type of thing. But do you have that kind of audience anymore? This is another topic that we've touched on, you know, that the, the, the entire industry is so saturated with superhero movies, um, MCU, now, now. DC Any kind of blockbuster, a, really. <clears throat> does the world have room anymore for something like that? Do I think it could potentially be a great movie? Yes. Do I think 20, 25 years ago, it could have been a tremendous movie? Yes. In today's environment, I'm not so sure. Okay. I mean, think about it. I mean, how many, I believe my generation will probably end up watching it. Okay. I think your main motivating factor is it's Christopher Nolan. Yeah. But well, if I you like the subject matter too. I'm like fascinated right, right. with that kind of stuff with the Manhattan but project. How many people, I, I forget how, you, you don't have to give me an exact age, but what, what generation are you in, Rob? We know you're older than Alec. I'm 41. And you know something about Star Trek. I'm but... 41. I'm 41. All right. So I could see it in your generation, but younger than that, okay, I don't know. I mean, you may be right about that, you know, and Nolan films that typically do the best are his superhero films and his sci-fi films like Interstellar or Inception, you know. So I don't know if it will have that draw. It may not have the draw of Fast 10 when that comes out this year, but uh, I'm really no, pumped. No, Noro right. Goros is right. It's universal. Not Warner Brothers, because remember he uh he had that falling out with them over the release of Tenet or whatever during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which he, he I was, loved Tenet. I he, thought Tenet was. Wasn't brilliant. he also one of the directors who was really pissed that like that Warner Brothers was like doing the streaming and the theaters on the same day and like the movie's gonna yeah. lose money that way and like yeah. and he uh, the directors who had their movies coming out right. like were were a part of that deal and they were all losing yeah I money mean, on I, that I, like my my biggest concern is whether or not the, the subject matter is enough to draw people in. Okay. I think you'll have a percentage of people that say, Hey, it's Christopher Nolan. I love him. He's great. I'm going to watch it. Then you have probably a group of people that are of an older generation that say, Hey, you know, I'd like to talk about that. I'd like to hear, you know, uh, see a movie about this and, and, and see their out, their outlook on it. But is it relevant enough to the general public that they'll go and see it. Because I'll be honest with you, since the Cold War ended and the Soviet Union dissolved, there's not a lot of interest in, in things like that part of history, the Manhattan Project. While the Cold War was going on and, and you know, all of us at any moment, there could be nuclear Armageddon or whatever, then the, the you know, the Manhattan Project and that topic was very relevant to people because it, it, you lived under that, that, that cloud, so to speak, you know, every day of your life, like, is the Soviet Union going to launch? I mean, every movie that, that 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 came out during that era was was uh, War Games. Okay, probably one of the most most famous ones. Okay, uh, you you had that that hanging over you. So interest in well, where did it all start? It started with the Manhattan Project. You know, blah blah blah. So so now that. The Cold War is gone. The nature of war has changed. It, it's not, you know, although ironically enough, it's gone right back to the same problem that we had back then. But really, the, the nature of the world has changed, as we've demonstrated it, you know, even with threatening, nu you know, uh, nuclear uh, 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 attacks from from Russia, we all know it's limited. 
right? Because yeah. because the Western world has made it very clear. You, you, you drop a nuke, dude, we're going to punish you like nobody's ever been punished before. And that's that's an inter- that that's an inter- interesting take. So even that is no longer the same. There isn't necessarily the threat of Armageddon. So I feel like you know my daughter's twenty two. I know she probably co- covered it in in school at some point. If I were to question her about the Manhattan Manhattan Project, I don't know how many facts she could give me. Yeah. You know, it was very relevant to me. You know, I grew up in a period where it just ended that anybody thought that during a a nuclear war that hiding under your desk at school is going to really help. Okay. <laughs> You know, like right, okay. You know, drop. Okay, yeah, they need, that, they need <laughs> to be hiding. In, they need to be hiding in refrigerators, as we've all learned, right? A duct tape. Remember, don't forget the duct tape. It'll keep the radiation out. It, it's just, you know, what I'm saying. I, Christopher it was just- Nolan is a very cinematic visual storyteller, and one of the things that they're pushing about this movie is, is as somebody mentioned it in the chat, was like it's going to be like all practical effects to the point where, like, they actually people were thinking that somehow Christopher Nolan got a hold of an actual nuclear weapon to blow up, right? But apparently they did do a giant explosion to capture it. So I know that they're going to be pushing the visual nature of this film. And uh, he is a visual director, right? He, he's kind of Kubrick-esque in that way, where he cares so much about the visuals and the presentation. That's why he had that falling out with Warner Brothers, is because he spent a lot of time and meticulous craft making tenant and experience for the theaters specifically he shoots with IMAX and stuff like that now. And he's been, he's been uh, experimenting with that since like his Batman days. So even those Batman movies are very cinematic, you know, like oh, well, I loved, I yeah. loved his Batman movies. Absolutely. I mean, but here's my, here, here's a, a, a different outtake. Hi, on Alec, what's up, buddy? Let, let me, let me put another outtake on it. All right. So I hope that, you know, because as you say, Nolan is very, very visual in nature. What you got to understand, in my opinion, again, is that may not be the audience that you're searching for. Okay. As I said, I believe that the audience will break up into an older generation that remembers that grew up during the Cold War and the threat of nuclear nuclear Armageddon. And then Christopher Nolan fans. Okay. And then somebody like you, a little bit of both, maybe. Um, but for our generation, the ones that grew up with that with with the Cold War. Dude, I have seen real nuclear mushroom clouds, endless video clips of it over and over and over again, okay? I don't know what you're going to be able to do to make that, you know, more visual, more impactful to someone like me. You know, I I saw the actual tests in Los Alamos. I saw, you know... Uh, they were on TV, you know, uh, the, 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 the fear mongering, you know, almost all of those, those documentaries, news stories, commercials, whatever ended with what a mushroom cloud. Okay. And a real one at that. Well, there could so, be a way, there could be a way to make it, especially because, you know, those, that footage, and I've seen all that stuff too. Right. And that footage is, is by today's standards, very grainy. It's four by three, right? Like it is. the way he's going to play with like the IMAX camera and the scale and the scope. And I mean, I'm just saying he could, and I think he would like make it. I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but like, I think that there's a, I think at this point, there's such a disconnected nature from like me and people younger, like from that, that we don't understand what that mushroom cloud actually represents as far as force. Right. And so he can show us the force of it. And I think that could be, and to, or in the importance, and maybe he does that with the drama. I don't know. We're talking about this one maybe. movie a lot. So I'm yeah, sorry. well, I, I think it's relevant. No, no, I think it's relevant because I mean, I, I, I think that that it's a good thing we're talking about this movie because I think it, it has a couple of challenges. I think number one, that the movie market has changed. All right, predominantly we're looking at superhero movies, and we've seen tons of explosions. We've seen island. We've seen like pieces of land float up into the air on Age of Ultron. We've seen anything imaginable. Okay. So what can you really do with, let's say, a quote unquote, um, you know, a, an enhanced visual of a mushroom cloud? What I'm really hoping for the movie, to be honest with you, is the drama aspects of it. Because to me, as someone of my generation, what's really interesting to me or what I'm very curious about is the humor interaction at that point. You're a bunch of scientists. OK, you know what you're doing. You know the kind of destructive power that you're playing with right here. How did you morally you go home to 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 your pre, you know, your your little house in in, in Los Alamos and you go into your house, you greet your daughter, whatever, 
and you know you're a scientist you know you're talking about something that has never been seen before that can wipe out civilization as we know it you know but you're you're accepting a paycheck to do this job how do you, how did you deal with that moral dilemma yeah. How did you look at your young child at home and say, yeah, how's work, daddy? That yeah, was great. Yeah. I think uh, we, we've 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 upped the output on the uh, uh, plutonium. So we're going to be able to blow up way more people and stuff. You know, I mean, you know, how, how do you how do you re reconcile all of that? I don't know. And I'd be interested to see that that interaction in the movie. Yeah, and I hope he spends that time. You should check out the trailer because it does seem like it's taking it that grounded, somber kind of approach to it. And I, I'm, I'm, I think it could be a powerful thing. Um, is there I anything? So. What else, any other movies you guys are looking forward to that are not superhero movies? Dune Part Two. Oh wait, I got a list. Uh, yes, Dune Part Two. One of the few movies that Amy and I wholeheartedly agree upon. Okay, thank God it ain't Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> The things okay. I deal with, right? I wanted I wanted to close out the year with one more bash at, at Blade Runner 2049 because it just goes to show you a good director can make a crappy movie, but can come right out of the gate and fix that, okay, with the Dune series. <laughs> She's going to turn around and hit me in the head. Watch. The rest of my um, coffee. Uh, Nick's, Nick is saying that Dune is kind of a superhero. I don't agree. I, I totally don't agree. All right, I'm going to have to completely disagree with the boss man. Dune is is a mythical character. I would say that it more falls in line to a fantasy fantasy genre, like mm -hmm. a Lord of the Rings or but even space, but... games of the uh, games of Thrones. Something more to that effect, effect a fantasy kind of 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 type of scenario. Whereas a superhero, I, I don't. It, it's fantasy, yes, but it is not the same type of fantasy, if you will. You know, Dune is very myth mythical and. Um, yeah, Nick, watch the Yeah, Dune Nick, movies. I read all the books too, buddy. So I am professor of Dune, my friend. All right, we'll talk about this when you get in the, uh, I'm uh, when you get in the office. I'm definitely going to go see it in IMAX. I saw part one in IMAX and I loved it. It was um, wow. So I will, um, so, you know, to me, I'm, I'm very excited about Dune part two. I know there, not everybody was a fan. Again, I, I really suggest, you know, Amy's a fan. I don't think Amy read the series of books, right? You didn't read them. I want I want to so bad. You should, I really you should. It really I'm gonna try. Read. What am I what are my goals for next year? I'm gonna yeah, try. I'm gonna try to do Yeah, that. you really should. It, it really is a good read. And and then we can come in the office and we can talk about it. One of my, my favorite favorite series ever. I I, I probably Road don't know. collecting. Why. Does Maxine come out next year? I I hope it comes out next year. I think it's supposed to. I, I got um, it. Did on anyone my see, list. I am so did anyone see X or Pearl that came out this past year, all, both from Ty West. It's it's in the same universe. They're both great movies, and Maxine's supposed to come come out. Again, hopefully next year. Yeah. Hopefully next well, year. Both of those movies, X and Pearl, are both in my top five for this year. I'm so pumped for Maxine. We don't have a release date yet, but I I would assume that it's towards probably like fall, October of this year. I, I hope so because I, I love I those it, movies. I, I think love 2022 movies. was a great year for horror and a great year for like indie movies. It was. It The horror films this year were amazing. Barbarian x and pearl and just there's some good ones and there were some bad ones like halloween ends but i'm not <laughs> talking about that right now so it's okay um well billy power max uh quoting the uh uh the litany of fear but uh changing it a little bit uh but yeah i mean to to, to me uh that coming from dune the litany of fear from benny jesuit that to me is is i remember reading that for the very first time and and i actually my daughter who's never read dune never watched the movies uh, really doesn't like sci-fi at all. That was actually the the litany of fear was a quote I used I used with her when she was younger, when she would get all anxious about something or another. It, it was great. It was great when you when you read it. Um, uh, uh, when you read the whole litany, it, it really is 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 a, a wonderful thing. That it's not telling you not to fear something. It's telling you a lot. The fear exists. Allow it to pass through you. OK, you know, and, don't let it control you and don't let it control you. Exactly. So there's just so much in that series. So I'm very much looking forward to to the Dune movie. Um, uh, you know, other than that, coming up, um, I saw the Mission Impossible. Never, never made my list, man. I'm just you know, it, it's just for me, Mission Impossible has turned into the Fast and the Furious. OK, one right after the other, right after the other. Yeah, and, but those and, movies are getting better, man, in my opinion. I love the Mission Impossible movies, like the, or at least from four on. Like, I love those movies. I'm pumped yeah, for them. It's just, movies. you know, I, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's as John Cole likes to put it, it's popcorn movies. Um, yeah. Well, you're you know, the one you know, just talking about how excited you were to watch The Flash. Come on, man. 
No, no, no. I was excited because, like, the cold steak, man. It's about time. We've been talking about this. Please release the movie before Ezra Miller does something else, you know, completely, you know, you know, distracting and whatever. Let's just get this movie out here. It's almost as if I don't believe the James Gunn universe can begin until we get this dirty laundry right out. So release the damn thing. Let's watch it. Let's see. Let's see what it is so we can talk about it and move on. You know what I mean? That that's more like it's just that that thing that that's hanging out there that you can't get past, right? You just want to get past it, like so you can get on with it. Um, so, all right, I got my list of, of non MCU movies, right? So obviously Shazam, we mentioned John Wick four. If I'm gonna watch an action movie, I'd rather watch John Wick than Mission Impossible. You quite honest with you? I'm um, John Wick, yeah. Here's one that I don't think anybody's really talked too much about: um, Dungeons and Dragons. That's supposed to I remember seeing. I, I saw that trailer. I hope it's good. It comes. Uh, Chris Pine's in it, right? I do love so. Him. I like Chris Pine as an actor. Always have. So I like to see that. You mentioned it, Fast X. Come on, bro. Okay. All right, Ludacris in space, baby. I can't wait to see what's next. Come on, man. Yep. They got. Oh, they, that got was a, awesome. they got a lot of, to live up to. In well, Fast you know X. what? That's why. That's why I like Fast X as opposed to Mission Impossible. It's tongue in cheek. They get it. Okay, you know, once you make, once you, I don't think they get it, bro. I think, I think Vin thinks he's making like serious, like I think he's making serious movies about family. (laughs) I don't think, I don't think he's in on the joke. What Vin thinks is what Vin thinks. I'm gonna say somebody (laughs) in the hierarchy goes, "Look, we got something here. Let's roll with it." Because the moment in that movie where they jump from the one skyscraper to the other skyscraper in Qatar, okay, that was all over. That's it. Okay, how are you going to top that? And they did. Ludacris in space, okay, in a Pontiac Fiero. That was outstanding, man. That Duct was tape. Great. Duct tape and a jet engine, right? I was just watching that scene going, they didn't, they didn't, man. That was too funny. Come on. That was hilarious. So I am looking forward to Fast X. Transformers, just to see whatever the heck they're going to do with that. I, I I want to see it just to see how they're gonna because that obviously you know after the first one it, it took a nosedive. Um, Blue Beetle I mentioned Craven the Hunter which should have probably been under MCU, um, and then the last two, uh, Hunger Games because I really enjoyed. Hunger oh yeah, Games. and then forgot about that one. Yeah, and then Wonka with uh, the kid from Doom. What's his name? Again? Timothy Chalamet. Yeah, yeah. So I think he's going to make a great Wonka. I, I saw like uh, press photos in, uh, of him in the outfit. I, I think he's he's going to be, I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see that. I think that's going to be interesting. I wanted no, to bring out, or not bring out, but like bring up, um, when we're, like when we brought up like just certain directors, like even I'm not totally clear on titles. Like I know next year, Wes Anderson has another movie that's supposed to come out next year that I read up on. Ari Aster is supposed to have something come out next year, and I love both of both of them. Yeah, that Ari Aster movie's got like Joaquin Phoenix in it, right? And I heard like the first cut. I heard the first cut was like four hours long. I'm like, come on, come on, bro. Yeah, Wes Anderson is one of my favorite filmmakers too, Amy. I love Wes Anderson. But 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 I heard both their next projects are supposed to come out next year, and I'm always looking forward to what that what they have. So wait, have they started selling tickets to uh, what's coming out early early in the year that you wanted to see? Uh, oh, Ant Man and Wasp. Have they started selling tickets yet? They usually start selling tickets like about a month. Okay. Before the movie comes out, like, so, can someone tell me what the official date is? And then, I'm, and you know what? That's probably when they're going to drop the trailer. Yeah, too. They'll, they'll drop the trailer like a month before the movie comes out, and then, and then at the very end, it'll say, tickets on sale now. I usually get the, you know? the exact dates from you, so <laughs> I you know, usually know before anybody else. I feel silly you, that I don't know it right now. Yeah, because you, usually you have tickets to the, like, the very first showing. And I'm, I'm sure I will. I gotta ask my cousin, like, are we going opening night or Friday? What's up? Right, right, right. Because you, you're always there. So, uh, but, yeah. I Bong mean, Joon-ho, yes. His, his next movie's supposed to come out. So what about you, Robbie? What 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 else are you you're looking forward to seeing? I got uh, two more I got on my list because we've mentioned John Wick and we've mentioned Maxine. Um I'm looking forward to Evil Dead Rise. Bruce Campbell coming back to produce another Evil Dead movie that's set in the timeline of the original. He's not in it, but he's like producing it. But apparently it's it tested so well because initially it was going to be straight to HBO Max and they've upgraded it to theatrical. So they're really pumped for that. 
And after seeing the trailer, I am legitimately excited to see this Barbie movie. Yes. Barbie <laughs> movie, like the Barbie movie. Did you see that trailer, Amy? Wasn't that awesome? <laughs> I just the whole because clear, clearly it just just from that one little teaser, you gotta get what this whole movie's gonna be. Like it's it's self-aware, but also not gonna be too serious, but it's gonna be smart. I'm gonna yeah. be out I the world of Barbie. I'm gonna watch the movie mainly because. I have seen so many Barbie videos through the years that I have to see it. Okay. Because for a period of time, Barbie, Barbie had the greatest formula. Okay. My daughter was just the right age and this had to be the all time smartest merchandising move I've ever seen. I, I think it was a complete shift. It was, you know, probably the, the, if you want to call it phase one of a real merchandising of a movie was George Lucas and star Wars. He opened that door up. He knew the value that was captured there. Then, then years, like 20, 30 years ago, Barbie made a shift and it was really, really smart, right? They would, they would plan all these toys, right? And it would be, you know, a mermaid theme or some other theme or whatever, or Malibu Barbie, whatever the theme was. Then they would start to release the toys into the stores. Then they would make DVD movies okay of these surrounding that particular theme so you knew that a movie was coming out a dvd was coming out before the dvd even came out because you take your kid to the toy store and they see this whole new barbie theme right and lo and behold a few weeks later dvd comes out kid wants a dvd kid watches a dvd next thing you know you're back at toys r us buying all of these toys okay and to me it was a pretty genius way of marketing things you know yeah, it absolutely. was really be, before you met, you spent all the money and produced the actual movie and turn it into a DVD, okay? You've a, you've actually used the merchandise to entice viewership of the DVD, okay? That was brilliant to me. Years and years of watching Barbie, you know, because <laughs> she'd want the dolls and then we'd have to put the DVD I, on at the same time. I grew up in that generation with the when the first few direct to video DVD Barbies came. Uh -huh. like, it was really just the first few. After that, I got you know I got older, but yeah, like. And each one of those dolls, mom and dad got for me. That that was my Christmas present that year. Like it was one was the Nutcracker, one was Rapunzel, one was one. So the, I I got it, it those really, dolls. It, yeah, it really was genius because by that point, you know how many Barbie dolls can you have? You know, so they they themed it out, and and then they, they to market it, they made the DVDs, which was brilliant. You know, so so okay, well you have that Barbie. No, I don't. This is Barbie Princess. This is Barbie Mermaid. Okay, this is Barbie, you know, and you're like, what's yeah. the difference? Yeah, okay. I grew up with, I have I have three sisters that are younger than me. And uh, and I remember the Barbie comic book from Marvel. And uh, it just, it's, they're genius. I miss that. <laughs> like, like 100%, 100%. So I'm really pumped for this Barbie movie. It just, like you said, it looks, it seems self-aware. Yeah. And knows what it's, it's trying to do. So, heck yeah, those are some of the movies that we're looking forward to. I appreciate everybody being here. Two Gun, I appreciate that. And he's looking forward to PCP, Dylan's Horror Show, March Madness, Action Fest, and Horror Fest. Yeah, man, the uh, we got the uh, March Madness list already, and I have the Action Fest and Horror Fest list for me. And yeah, anyway, we're looking forward to that. So, uh, Rex, Amy, thank you for being here. Nick doing his show tonight. Nick is doing his show. So on the Experience YouTube channel tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern time, some great stuff. We're we gonna give away a statue. We're gonna give away a statue. Uh, I forgot about that. Um, we have uh, an a a piece of art from uh, Bob Layton. We have JLA Adventures from the personal file copies of uh, George Perez and his widow, um, uh, um, Carol Flynn Perez, um, and all and the proceeds from the sale of uh, I think we have two copies. The proceeds from the sale of the trade paperback JLA Adventures will will go to uh, uh, oh, Carol. Carol Flynn, um, and then the uh, art piece from Bob Layton, which was donated, uh, was uh, is Iron Man on rollerblades. That will go to benefit Fat Jack's uh, local comic book shop in Philadelphia. Been around since I was a kid uh, to kind of help them recover from uh, the post pandemic. So all that will be on tonight, uh, seven to uh, seven o'clock Eastern time on the experience. And then along with that, obviously uh, there are additional art pieces I think from Bob Layton um, um, and um, Little Doctor Doom and Silver Surfer. We've right, got and then nice, of course original art as well. We've got something nice with Iron Man, Ant Man, and Spider Man. So yes, I highly yeah, recommend so, it. Yeah, so, so some great stuff there. Um, you, obviously, you'll be back 
with uh, me and hopefully John will be here. And then Alec uh, next Wednesday, the what? Fourth, right? Uh, yeah, back, back exactly. here. yeah, fourth. Fourth, yeah. We'll um, have a fantastic fourth show. So you got to get some Fantastic Four stuff ready. That's what you got to do. <laughs> nice. Hopefully Nick heard that. Yeah, sure ho- he hopefully if, if the movie comes out in 2024 um, and it actually is decent, finally. Um, oh, I did want to mention, we'll have to talk about this Wednesday. Apparently there was an Avengers TV series in the 90s. Yes. I, I, it, it may not have been released in the United States. I'm thinking States. of his crickets. Mm. It may not what? have been released in the United States. I actually read an article. I saw the they were horrible to me. They were hard. I, I are, are you were, talking about the Justice League? Oh, maybe it was the Justice League. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I saw that League. making the go rounds. They did a pilot for the Justice League back <laughs> in the nineties, and it's terrible. Like you can find it online. It's 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 terrible. It's got I fire, ice, green, green lantern, green flash, and atom. What's that? Oh yeah. Well, did you see the Green Lantern? You want you want to hear John Cole scream? <laughs> I, I saw a picture of the Green Lantern. He's in a blue uniform. It's not even green. Yeah, okay. it's just a really rough movie. It's just wow. uh, you can find it online. I'm sure that you can probably find it on YouTube or something. But I'm it's gonna have to. Bad. Yeah. I, I I read the article. I never even knew that existed. I'm like, I'm gonna, as soon as the show's over, I was I'm gonna like, look it up. Wait, was there a Roger Corman movie I didn't know about? <laughs> it's it just it feels like that almost. I mean, it was worse than that Roger Corman Fantastic Four movie. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. But uh, yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, join us for that. Everybody have a happy new year. And my final show is going to be tonight for a special presentation on Dylan's horror show. We're talking about terror train, which is a 1980 new year's Eve themed slasher film starring Jamie Lee Curtis and David Copperfield. So very excited to be talking about that. Thank you all so much for joining us. And thank you, Rex and Amy and everybody over at the experience dynamic forces, dynamite y'all rock. We appreciate y'all and all the support. So station you out there in the chat. We love you. Um, have a good happy new year. We'll see you. We'll see you next.